I think Mintra name was absolutely random. There is unfortunately no story to us, you know. Uh, <laughs> So why fashion first time around and why health the second time? First time was more serendipity, second time was more deliberate. I sent a note to whole company saying, you know, okay, we are in a real crisis now. Let us make sure we don't let it go to waste. But actually a lot of interesting things happening at uh, Cult as well, right? There is talk that you guys might do an IPO, so it's reached that maturity stage. Yeah, Cult has been, you know, now this year we would have finished seven years. Uh, when we started Cult, you know, India didn't really have the mainstream culture of fitness. There used to be some of these, you know, those bodybuilding gyms where you know only guys in their twenties will consider going there to really pop up, and you know, and that's pretty much what you know gym culture in India was. But I've personally been, you know, very deeply involved in health and fitness, and I believe fitness is for everyone, um, obviously for both genders, but also irrespective of your age, etc. So currently, we started in twenty sixteen, you know, with the thought process: can we make workout really fun and easy? Today, you know, Cult has made you know fitness mainstream. We run six hundred centers. We are by far the largest fitness chain. We are you know by far the largest fitness chain in the country. The second largest player is only hundred centers. We on the other hand, we add hundred centers every six months. So we are you know, um, I think in few years from now, we will have incredible you know scale in terms of uh, center footprint, but also variety of formats. You know, really everything from Strength to yoga to dance to boxing to now traditional gyms as well. We have done bunch of acquisitions and then of course financial milestones etc. You know we are our core fitness services business is nearly profitable and um, we need to at some point create exit for early stage investors etc. So we are actively thinking about exit options and I very high likelihood that we should list hopefully in next eighteen to twenty four months. Is this how you envisioned Karat Mukesh when you launched it? Because initially people thought it was this place where you know people. Right. fitness classes, then there was focus on the dietary aspect. But now when I look at cult, it is literally everything, right? You said Before pandemic, we were trying to be this holistic health platform, covering everything from fitness to health food to mental health to primary care, etc. Uh, pandemic forced us, you know, think very deeply, and we figured that we are probably better off doubling down on everything related to fitness and anything else. At least you know, either putting it on back burner or spinning it off. So we spun off EatFit as an independent company. Since then, EatFit has diversified into way beyond health food, like yeah. basically all kind of food, and that's doing really well. Our KFit platform also we spun out and rebranded as SugarFit to go yeah. after diabetes. They are starting to get you know good traction. But within Cult, we just doubled down on everything fitness. So we acquired Gold's Fitness. We aggregate a lot of uh, unorganized fitness supply in the country, and we build this whole. D to C vertical of you know the products you are referring to apparel, footwear, fitness equipment. So I think we are slowly now evolving to one stop shop for fitness, and that's a big part of vision, but not all of it. I think eventually, and I think again as someone will talk about book, right? I really believe that pursuit of healthy lifestyle require many things to come together. Fitness yeah. is only one component, and today you know we are you know because of changes during the pandemic, we are not working on all those pillars yet. But I think it's only a matter of time before we come back to those things. It's interesting how you decided to over-index on one category when you said right. things went to zero. Yeah. But was there a point when you felt like I am not going to recover from this <laughs> or cult is not going yeah. to recover from this? What kept you going during right. those lowest points? Yeah. I think in some ways, you know, there I'm very fortunate in the sense that you know I, my entrepreneurial journey started way back in '99 in mm -hmm. Silicon Valley. And since then, I think I've seen, you know, I've, first of all, I've gone through five major business cycles. So, you know, we see this, you know, like com, you know, uh, just this overall macro business cycle, right? You know, like dot com crash and then 2007 financial crisis. In uh, 2013, India, we had this balance of payment crisis. And uh, 2016, 17, there was general disillusionment with the digital companies, yeah. were no exit and all of that, right? And then this pandemic driven, both 2020, you know, pandemic crisis. And 22, this euphoric year, you know, where things went out the whack of whack in the other direction. On top of that, I've also seen, you know, crisis are a big part of, you know, how companies get built. And, you know, one of the phrases that I've used many times in the past is, uh, is uh, you know, never letting crisis go to waste. So I remember when the, you know, I think March 14 or so, mm. when the, you know, all the center shut down, we called everybody, you know, uh, I started, you know, I sent a note to whole company saying, you know, okay, we are in a real crisis now. Let us make sure we don't let it go to waste. 
let's see what we can do. See what happens in crisis, somewhere it gives you license to make dramatic changes. It's like a emergency power in a country. Like you right? hit a reset. Exactly. You know, if the, you know, let's say, you know, the leader of the country, you declare emergency, you, know, you have a lot of powers, you can make wholesale dramatic changes, right? So it's like crisis in a company is like that. So we made many fundamental changes, you know, as much the number of changes and strategic shift we made in those six months of pandemic is more than what we have done in the last seven years. And one year down the line, you know, or 18 months down the line, we were not only well out of crisis, but we are really thriving and things, you know, last 12 to 15 months have been best possible in execution and cut, right? So, Mukesh, you come from a small town um, in India and then of course you went to IIT Kanpur. So, you know, what was the playbook that you had um, in terms of how you should start up, how you should be as an entrepreneur? Because right now, you know, there are networking forums and communities where people can help out each other. But when you uh, started up, you know, who did you look to or what right. was your safety net? Sure. Or is it something that you learned, like you learned about fashion? Right. <laughs> I noticed you also changed your wardrobe and, you know, while building Mintra, suddenly Mukesh became uh-huh. very fashion right. conscious. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, did that happen right. as you built your startups? Sure, sure. A lot of the, maybe actually I'm curious, since you mentioned a small town, how many people in the room who think, you know, you, you are from a small town? You know, that's a relative, but you have to see like, you know, about half the room. Okay, that's that. So that's great. First of all, that, you know, Stoa is able to attack you guys from smaller towns. And I think, lot, I do believe a lot of future growth in India will be driven by smaller towns. So great to see so many people. Maybe you know, a lot of you go back and maybe start something interesting in your respective town, etc. See, for me, I think I grew up in a you know, BHL township in Haridwar. And like all these, you know, organized township, basically the culture is you prepare for engineering or medical school, so which is what I did. And somehow I ended up in IIT. And at IIT, after one or two years, I was feeling quite lost. I think, you know, I studied very hard first, you know, three semesters, but started to get disillusioned. My grades started dropping and I, you know, and like, you know, typically... Why was that? I felt, you know... Just I was pursuing maybe just following other people, you know, I just, you know, even engineering college, some ways I got into it because everybody was preparing for engineering mm. and college, you know, IIT in those system was you basically uh, maintain really good grades and get great recommendation and go to US for masters, etc. And I also got into that treadmill and sometime my second year, you know, I said, feeling I don't know what I'm doing, why I'm doing. And I started exploring all kind of random things, you know, which included obviously playing a lot of sports and, um, uh, hanging on library, reading all kind of books, you know, unrelated books. So one impact of that, obviously, my grades, you know, really went way south, you know, quite embarrassingly south. Uh, which, uh, so was it like five points someone or below? Yeah, I think no, no <laughs> doubt about that. <laughs> but yeah, huh. it's that embarrassing that <laughs> I'm not. I think first my two years, it was in the nine and ten range. And my last two year average was probably around six. So I graduated around eight. Which is our, but yeah, it was, I still built two unicorns. So yeah, I, I, there's no correlation at all. But uh, what, what, what coming to to your question yeah. about you know interest in entrepreneurship. So as you know, as hanging on library a lot, you know, I um, came across some really good entrepreneurship book. Hmm. So one was um, Akio Morita, which is Sony's founder, hmm. and then Sam Walton's book, um, uh, definitely called Made in America. Uh, uh, Made in America. Walmart. Well, his you know Walmart journey. And, you know, this idea of, you know, here are these guys who just had a dream. And uh, in case of Sam Walter, you know, he started one store. Mm. And in his lifetime, you know, became the, I think, one of the largest companies in the world. Yeah. Similarly, you know, Akio Morita, they started with some power supplier or something. And then by 90s, they were one of the you know, top electronics, you know, uh, company in the world. <laughs> so that idea, I think, first started germinating in my head that, you know, there are people who believe they can do something you know, incredible. And then persist with that, the like great things that happen. So I think the initial, at least, you know, more, I would say, romantic version of, you know, entrepreneurship was born during that time. Then I ended up, you know, getting a job in US uh, for Deloitte Consulting. I was, you know, working in Chicago in 98, 99. And that time, you know, dot-com boom was just going through a roof. And every day we'll read up stories about IPOs and companies, you know, transforming work and how internet is going to change the world. And, you know, me and my colleagues, you know, we think we are just, you know, wasting our lives in Chicago, you know, all the uh, center of attraction, Silicon Valley, that's where you know, people are doing all this, you know, world changing things. And we have to be there. The difference was, you know, many people talk, but at some point, at one day, I just said, enough, you know, I just need to go to Silicon Valley. 
and fortunately a friend of mine also got convinced so both of us quit our job which is a delight we drove from chicago to silicon valley in 99 you know as 23 year old and tried to start a company you know and had no idea how to you know start a company so we were living in a living room of a friend and trying to build a company we struggled for about almost 6 months and we were you know clueless in every sense of the word right we had no idea but i realized okay you know i want to be an entrepreneur i have no idea how to be an entrepreneur so therefore i learned about it so i think made one really good decision which is uh, i'm only going to work for early stage companies so my criteria was you need to be less than 10 employees only then i'm going to work right and in silicon valley fortunately there is no dust every you know garage has a you know less than 10% <laughs> company right so you can walk into anywhere and join which is pretty much what i did